Please ensure you read and understand the following disclaimer before watching the video. G'day guys, Sparky Dave here. Today's video is a quick demonstration on how to commission a heat pump unit. This is not an installation video, so I've already installed the indoor and outdoor units and done the piping, all of that. I may put a video up in the future showing you guys how to do that, but this is simply a commission guide just to refer to in the field if you're ever stuck. In order to complete this, you'll definitely need all of this gear. Uh, this is a manifold, a micron gauge, vacuum pump, couple of wrenches, um, we've got the nitrogen tank and a regulator for the nitrogen too. You'll also need an extension lead, allen key and some bubble solution for leak detection. Get this off the ground, there's no place to have it but just for the purpose of this video I laid it out nice and clean. I do look after this quite well so I don't want any debris or any contaminants going into the pipes here. The first test we want to do is a pressure test to ensure that the pipe work is firstly connected and secondly has no leaks. So we're going to pump it full of nitrogen and that puts outward pressure on the joints. You can't do this simply by vacuuming down the system because in a vacuum you're sucking all the joints together and under pressure which is what the heat pumps going to operate at it's going to be pushing, putting outward pressure on the joints. So here I'll be attaching the regulator to the nitrogen bottle. The wrench I used to do it up with is a 12 inch wrench. Um, now first thing, you want to make sure that the valve on the top is closed. And then simply push the regulator in. And then do it up. Now you never ever point these at people or property and always have them on a nice even level surface where they are supported so it's not going to fall over and then this will go flying off at pressure. Now I want to do this nut up nice and tight. Now that's not going anywhere. Right the next thing we're going to set up is our manifold. So on the manifold here we've got three different coloured hoses. First of all, your blue hose here is for low pressure. So this we'll be using when we've got the vacuum gauge attached. The red is for your high pressure end. And so this is for use when you're pressure testing with nitrogen. And the yellow hose connects to your appliances. So this one connects directly to the regulator here or also to the vacuum pump later on. What I'll do now is remove this port here. Make sure you use two wrenches for this and be careful you don't want to crack any of the brass. So for the first test we're going to be doing high pressure. So we'll attach the red hose to the port here. We want to make sure these valves are shut. Don't over tighten them. And then this yellow hose here attach to the regulator. So the setup will look a little like this. Another thing you can use is some bubble solution and just spray it around the joints here and the joints inside. If you're concerned or there is a leak somewhere, just to identify exactly where it is easily. Wherever you set your manifold up and hang it from, make sure it is stable so it's not gonna fall off and break. So initially when firing these up, obviously don't point them at people. And the other thing is the first test we're going to do is we're gonna set it to 100 PSI. If any fittings are forgotten, you'll know because it will leak straight away and we're not bumping it all the way up to 450 psi to start off with. So we'll open the valve here. And if you need to adjust the output, this lever here does that, but I've already got it set on 100 psi right there. So we'll open the valve of the red end. And see it's not quite 100 psi on here so I'll just crank this up slightly and that's on 100 shut the valve nothing's blown apart it's not dropping in pressure 
So we can safely bump this up to 450 psi is the next test. Obviously check what's recommended where you are or with the type of heat pump you're installing. Some of them may be up to 500 psi but you likely don't want to exceed that so I tend to test at 450 psi. Alright so now I'm going to increase the pressure on here. So I'll open this valve a wee bit and ramp this one up. And you can see we're increasing So we're steady there on 400 psi. So I'll still crank it up to around 450. Um, I can go up to 500 but not exceed 500 at all. That's absolute max. But today I'll be going just above 450 so about 460 psi. And we are there so we'll shut this one off. So what I'll also do here, shut this line off and close the valve. And then I'm going to depressurize all of this slot line side, but the load side down the red tube is still going to stay at, well, it's around 460 psi or psi g on here. So to do this, I'm going to use the blue side just to slowly release it. Um, we've got this shut off nice and tight, so we're not going to lose any pressure. And then we'll slowly open this side. And not, we don't want to blow the thing up, so, and we'll slowly release this one. And that's just nitrogen being released, so we're good there. Now we've got our mark, we know exactly where it is, obviously put some tape on it, check it, um, and leave it here for about 10 minutes. To make sure it's going to stay at well say 460 ish psi on here so we'll make sure that the needle is not dropping now if it does drop you're going to have to likely check use bubble solution check your joints and potentially redo some of them that are affected if you find when you find what's affected so we've we've shut it off and we're just going to Check it again in 10 minutes time. Sometimes I take a photo and just compare that photo a bit later on. If you do use bubble solution during pressure testing on the fittings, make sure you clean it up properly afterwards. So it's been around 10 minutes and the gauge hasn't moved in the slightest. So I'm happy it's passed the pressure test. So what I'll do now is release this valve just slightly and then this one just a little bit. and let that nitrogen drain out of the line. Now you make sure that your nitrogen bottle is obviously closed. Because I had closed it and drained all of the pressure out earlier, I'm happy to take all of this off. Make sure all your gauges are on zero. Make sure this is closed. Open, open this up. Open these up. Just make sure there's no pressure left in the line and then you can go ahead close that valve disconnect the appliance line now I'll disconnect the red line from here and I'll be attaching the blue line to back it down shortly so before moving the rig make sure it's zeroed out and then you'll be safe to remove it obviously if there's pressure in it it may cause harm or injury to someone So with the vacuum pump, here I connect the blue line to the port, and so this is the low pressure side of the manifold. Then I attach the yellow hose here to the vacuum pump. Again, make sure it's on nice and tight, make sure nothing else is loose on there. Now you want to make sure that the oil in the vacuum pump is nice and clean, and that it's regularly serviced, and that you use it only on a level surface. So make sure you've got your T-piece set up 
for the micron gauge on the blue line. Don't forget to remove the Schrader valve if there is one inside the T-piece. And on here, I will install the micron gauge. Plug the vacuum pump in and then turn her on and open up the valve here. Make sure the gauge is reading in microns and then open both valves and you'll see the pressure drop into a vacuum below zero. So for a proper vacuum you want to aim for 200 microns. So this is removing all the moisture from the pipe work. This is a back to back system so I suspect it won't take long to drop under 200 microns. Moisture removal from the pipe work will occur when it's below 500 microns. The moisture starts boiling away in a vacuum and the vacuum pump will then evacuate that from the system. So now that we're at 200 microns, we want to shut the blue valve off and do a decay test just to make sure that after 10 minutes that this level stabilizes and doesn't climb up over 500 microns. And if it's gonna rise over 300 microns, we're gonna keep it going for much longer. So the valve's shut off. Shut this valve off. And then turn the pump off. I can keep this one locked off and release the vacuum. And so from the gauge here, it's isolated all through the unit and returning back through the pipes. And we're at 270 microns, so I will leave this for 10 minutes now and come back and make sure that this hasn't gone up over 500 microns. In the meantime, I'm going to remove both of these valve covers. Unscrew the covers. Keep these clean, somewhere clean. And so inside these two are some Allen key fittings. So shortly, I'll be using this number five, five mil, I believe. I could be wrong on this one. It is kind of scratched off. So I've waited a while now. It seems to be pretty stable on 290 microns. So I'm happy enough that the system has been thoroughly evacuated. Now for the next part, I'm going to incrementally release the vacuum back to zero PSIG with the Allen keys. This ensures that air does not get back into the system and also that no refrigerant escapes the system. First thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that the valve to the micron gauge is isolated just to prevent any contamination from coming back through the line if it does happen at all. So what we'll do is we'll put the Allen key into the liquid line here and slowly release it watching the manifold and we are releasing it back to zero here. Okay. Slowly release and there we're at zero so there'll be no pressure once we release the pipe so we'll make sure we'll make sure that we've closed the valves now and we can remove this pipe now perfect now what we'll do is chuck the cap on the end of this and then release incrementally both sides Now with both these valves, open them all the way and then half a turn back and that prevents them from getting seized in the future. We'll put the caps on really securely. Excellent. So that there is now commissioned. We'll finish off the installation and go power it up. If you are going to be doing heat pumps, make sure you get the EECA reference. 
Um, this is the one I've got and I do need to update to the latest one. This is what the latest one looks like. These are really good reference in the field if you need a refresher or a reminder for something you were doing with the heat pump. So I can pack all this away now, disconnect the vacuum pump, and yeah. Thanks for watching guys, catch you on the next one.